right, now in section 12.3, our next concept is to build higher terms. So let's go back to our fraction example because that's how we can learn how to do this. So if I had uh, 2 fifteenths and 7 thirty-sixths, I might want the higher terms for those. So the first thing I did was find their least common denominator like we did in our last uh, video. Now the next thing I want to do is build the higher terms. So I'm going to write 2 fifteenths as something 100 and 80ths. And so then the 736 also I will be rewriting as something 180ths. So what I need to know is what do I multiply by 15 in order to make 180? So if I don't know, there's no need to, to get out your calculator here. You see this 3 and this 5 here, right? There's one of those there and there's one of those there. So there's still a 3 missing and then 2 squared. So this is going to be be times 12. And so this would also be times 12, and that would make my new term, my higher term, 12 times 2, which is 24 180 ths. And if you need to, we can check that out, right? We can say, does 12 times 15 really give 180? There you go. So no doubts, right? And I didn't even use my calculator. Now the same thing's true with 36. What I have in 36 is the 2 squared and the 3 squared, right? These two right here. So what's missing is 5. So I have to multiply this by 5. So that is the same thing with the numerator using the fundamental theorem of fractions, right? To get that. And there's my new higher term. Now we're going to do that same thing with rational expressions. So remember our last rational expression where you found the least common denominator, so 1 over x was, um, and 2x plus 5 over x plus 5, um, those were our least common denominator of x plus 5. Well, this one's already a higher term, so there's nothing to do there. So we're just needing to make 1 over x look like x over x plus 5. So what I'm looking at here is what's missing from my current denominator to get my least common denominator. Well, obviously there's this x, x plus 5 missing, so x plus 5. And now I'm using the fundamental principle or fundamental theorem of rational expressions instead of, of uh, fractions, right? And now numerators multiply and my new numerator looks like x plus 5 over x times x plus 5. And no, don't cancel them out, you're going to be tempted, but remember our point is to build the higher terms here. All right, now moving on to our second example here. Remember our second example, x plus 2 over x squared plus 3x plus 2, and we had x plus 1 over x plus 2. So we found our least common denominator by factoring first and then finding that the least common denominator was x plus 2 over x plus 1. Well, this one already has that, so that one again is already the higher term. So let's focus our attention on this one. We have an x plus 1, and we have that over x plus 2. And we want to build the higher term so that when we're done, we have x plus 2 times x plus 1. So what we're asking ourselves here is what do we need to multiply our current denominator by in order to make it our new denominator? Well, that, of course, is an x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply this by x plus 1. And I'm going to multiply this by x plus 1. Now here's where it's really important to use that algebra skill where we multiply out these two numerators because the next thing we're going to be doing, remember, is being adding these. And to add two numerators, we have to have individual terms. So we're going to actually multiply this out. This is x plus 1 quantity squared. So I'm going to square the first term, x squared, plus the product of the two terms times 2, 2x, and plus the last term, 1 squared. And there we go. There's my new higher term. Now we're ready to proceed on, and we're going to be adding two fractions that are not like denominators. So adding and subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. And we're going to use our notes from above, adding, um, adding when the <clears throat> excuse me, finding the least common denominator, and then building the higher terms, and then we're going to be doing adding and subtracting. And so we'll come back in the next video and we'll do that.